So welcome everyone to our Chaos, Diversity and Inclusion Working Group meeting on February 26, 2020. We are now recording the meeting. So if you have your camera open, this will be available on YouTube afterwards so that anyone can go back and watch our meetings. Um, I want to share. Clarification, was that an invite to open the cameras or? <laughs> I just want you to be aware. I'm not saying you have to open the cameras. I'm just saying if you do have them open, be aware that um, right. this will be on the internet on YouTube. <laughs> in, the, in the chat, I just shared the minutes for today. And Let's start editing them. So let's see the attendees. Who all is here? Armstrong. Jelaine, nice to see you on the call. Astabis. Okay. I am new here. Yes, we can hear you. You're a little bit quiet, but we can hear you. Okay, that's good. So let's see. Where did we leave off last week? So since we have uh, Asta new on the call, and I, I don't remember, Jelaine, if you joined the calls before. So if you feel comfortable, feel free to introduce yourself. Hi. Yeah, sorry. No, I have never joined. And I haven't, I haven't even joined the mailing list yet. I'm kind of lurking to learn more about this. But um, I, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a lawyer. I've been working in the open source space for quite some time. I um, lead, have been one of the leads of the SBX um, legal team for far too long, <laughs> 10 years, I think. And I currently uh, work at Canonical. Excellent. Yeah, I know you from uh, the SBDX group and, uh, meeting at contractors. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I think uh, I think some you'll be at the conference coming up next month in Tahoe. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah. I will be there too. But I mean, we can chat more then. We have a we have panel them. about the worst inclusion. You're welcome to join that. Yeah, uh, it's a what? We have a panel yeah. session. A panel. Okay, right. I haven't looked closely at the schedule yet. I figured there'd be plenty going on, and there's always more than you know anyone can possibly attend. But yeah, I will certainly uh, see you at some of those events. Yeah. So I, I know you said you were here to lurk. Are there questions that you currently have or something that you're thinking through that brought you here? Uh, no, not yet. Just a topic I'm interested in. Excellent. Excellent. Good to have you. Thanks. Asa, did you Asa, want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, right. uh, Yes, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Asa Best and I'm currently working on the micro task for building the workflow process for diversity and inclusion badging. Like I'm planning to apply for GSOC this year through that project. Uh, I think it's a very interesting area. I haven't seen something quite like this around in many ideas list. So yes. Excellent. Uh, well, thank you for joining us and thank you for your interest in our project. Um, you are on the on the call with Matt Snell and Sale, who are the leads on this badging project. So 
before we jump into any of our regular business, are there questions that you came across or something that we can help you understand and resolve um, right off the bat? All right, I just came across, I, like, I had a doubt, I posted it in the comments for the micro task. So, like, the, I find it a bit confusing. Uh, there's a term which has been used in question zero of the micro task, that term is software batch. So, like, I wanted to know if that software batch refers to an independent digital batch, which has some metadata associated with it, or does that batch have to be, like, does it have to be defined in DNI metrics, something like that. So, uh, was I audible? I don't think so, I was completely audible. Uh, so, I'm, I'm actually gonna try to share on the screen the uh, issue. <laughs> I, I think this is uh, the issue on the uh, diversity and inclusion repo on badging. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so so just to try to get uh, everybody on the same page, I'm going to get that on the screen now. Yeah, that goes on the other screen. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, please go ahead. So so um, I guess you're talking about micro tasks. Okay. Um, so so c could you clarify the question though? Because um, like I I, I kind of got a disconnect a bit. I couldn't um, follow. So would it be possible just to reiterate? You can also write the question in the chat. Uh, that's also an option that we don't have as much audio issue. Or write it in the Google uh, Doc. So I'm not hearing anything. Am I audible? No. I think you asked if you were audible, but it was so quiet, it was really difficult to hear. Right. Might be some network issue on my end. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, you could type in the chat. Um, oh, do you right. see the, the chat? Yeah, so they, they kind of hide that, but but uh, once you open it, yeah, just feel free to type there. Maybe better write it in the Google Doc because then we can see live as it's being typed. Um, so here's the link to the Google Doc again. I cannot find the link. Oh, thanks. Hi, Daniel. Good to have you on the call. Hello, sorry for delay. So, Asta, are you? Uh, right, I'm talk? just in the process of writing. Uh, I'm writing it right below the time of the meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you start uh, typing it, um, um, so in in the Google Doc, I, I guess we don't see uh, typing. It's it's uh, okay. Are you the? Uh, uh, like I'll just type yeah. in the chat then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put it there and and um, and I'll paste it. Okay, so while while that is 
ongoing, we can talk about other topics that are of interest. Um, are there any anything from any of you on the call that you would like us to talk about today? Um, I, I did actually on Slack, I'm not sure if you saw it or not, I did mention that um, um, me and Matt do sync bi-weekly and we didn't sync between last meeting and this one. Uh, there were a couple of things from last meeting. I just want to get, um, if possible, we can get everyone uh, up to speed on. Uh, the other topic is the issue I opened about the uh, badgeathons or whatever <laughs> that we do on Sundays, because they're not really hackathons, but uh, they're kind of like that. It's a three hour um, um, work session that basically um, includes some sync and async um, components, some discussion, uh, but you know, we don't have to stay the three hours and obviously everybody is welcome. Um, but it's, it's just, uh, I guess a convenient way to, you know, get at questions and answers quickly as we're working. Um, and, um, yeah, so, so the other two topics I believe was the front end that you showed, uh, for, uh, badging. Um, I, I can't remember the name of the project though, but you kind of showed that there was a way for people to, on the Linux Foundation site to, uh, or, or something related to get badged. Um, and the idea that we can create a workflow from, you know, starting from that towards the PR without, without requiring people to have a lot of moving parts uh, to the process. Um, and the tail end discussion about presenting this upstream, I believe it's, you know, up, up the chain in Linux Foundation, but uh, again, you know, um, I will look at the notes to remember what, you know, uh, we talked about uh, there, but uh, it, it was the last 10 minutes of the call basically last week. Uh, let me double check if we have the minutes. Uh, yeah, I think it was about just show, uh, showcasing or presenting about um, our workflow or our process. Um, I think maybe it was Emma. Um, you know, names are, are not my thing, but <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but it, it was it was after Matt had to leave to class. So um, so I think it's a just a good idea to sync it up now if that's possible. Do you recall what it was or? I appreciate um, the idea of having people on those hackathons, if anything. Um, the the badgeathons, yeah, um, for that matter. But um, I I actually really think it would be a good idea to welcome everybody possible, because right now they've been closed up to this point. But uh, I think it'd be just just well even more productive to have more people involved in the development process, the workflow process. All right. And so, so the next meeting is this week. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we do alternating Sundays. Um, oh, it's Sundays, me, not Saturdays. Oh, so, yeah, Sundays. It gives me a chance to alternate another thing at the same time the other Sundays. So that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the issue I kind of mentioned on it that we might want to add this to the uh, shared calendar. Um, so people would just um, have access to that. Um, and obviously if there's a postponing or cancellation or, you know, um, those are details, I guess, but, but it, it, it will be affixed bi-weekly unless there is, you know, a reason to cancel for one Sunday, right? Yeah, I mean, as long as one person's there, it's better than nobody. We also have a mailing list. Uh, I'm sure you've been on that already, but it's very useful for connecting with people too. So we are 
for those watching the video, we are having a conversation on the um, Zoom chat. So uh, here, I'm gonna post the question that Asta just sent me. Uh, it's now in the Google Doc. All right. And then uh, Amy asked if there's a chaos Slack channel and the answer is no, there's no chaos Slack channel. Then Saleh says Slack, he slacked me that was on a different community, the Node.js community. Uh, chaos itself uses IRC and for the diversity inclusion working group, we have a separate mailing list specifically for this working group. So one of the things that we started to talk about, so before I move the topic, um, is the, um, is there anything more about the badging that we want to talk about today? So from my end, I just, I'm not sure IMS standards. I'm, I'm honestly uh, more about the repo setup and uh, I haven't gotten in depth, uh, just related to the question, right? Um, so, so, but I, I think it definitely is, um, you know, it's uh, likely um, a good idea to address that discussion on the actual issue. So I'm, I'm just gonna post a link to this Issue. So, I, so I think it relates particularly here, um, and I should do my homework, obviously. But I'm, you know, just catching up to the issue. So, um, so would it be a good place to continue the discussion here? Absolutely. And let me let me uh, just yes. add this. Yes, I'll be an IMS member for the next two weeks only. So, if you need anything from them before I leave my current position, let me know. Okay, so this is about the idea to pilot the badge with um, the OpenStack community, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, Saleh was just mentoring IMS Global Standards. So I am an IMS Global member currently, but will not be in two weeks. So if we need anything from IMS, oh, I get it. I, I can probably ask questions for us in the next two weeks. Okay. Um, Open stack, honestly, I'm not leaving. Really. We've got a lot of it. At this point, we've got a lot of advice that IMS would be useful, like following the standards would be useful to our organization, the badging process. Um, okay, and I do know they're actually based off Mozilla. Yeah. And we've worked pretty closely with Mozilla in the past. Um, but uh, we haven't dug a lot into the details of IMS. Um, certification of standards. Okay. Um, so that might be uh, that was something we wanted to, exp to explore with an intern as well. So we might not it might not be in scope to try and do that within two weeks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured I'd throw it out there and offer. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. I think that's it for badging. Then we we've just been chugging along, making progress, making changes, adding commits. I actually need to head to class, but thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. So what I wanted to then change the conversation to um, focus on is defining metrics again. So to get everyone caught up, we have a spreadsheet for tracking metrics and I'll share my screen so that we're all on the same page. So, we have we have on the on our repository we have these uh, focus areas and then within the focus areas we have the different metrics and just uh, for management purpose we have the spreadsheet to better keep track of them uh, so here the big items are the focus areas 
and then the rows in between are the individual metrics that we defined and green means they are part of the current release and all other colors means we need to work on them. So we have, we were discussing, so now, now that we've released the last version at the end of January, I would like us to get back into defining more metrics or revising metrics. So if you have any feedback on already released metrics, which you can find over at chaos.community slash metrics. These are all of the released metrics, not just diversity inclusion, but all the working groups. Then that feedback is welcome and we can work on that. Otherwise, I would like to have to continue working on um, on metrics. And what we do is typically here in these working group meetings, we sometimes spend 20 minutes uh, working on a shared Google Doc to, to build out a metric because um, we found it to be more engaging if we can all work on the same metric and talk through it and revise it together than try to do it asynchronously. So just for those new on the call, this is a little bit background on how this working group has been working in the past. Is there any questions about how the diversity inclusion working group is working or what we do? If that's not the case, then I propose that we advance this documentation accessibility metric that we started working on, but we still need to finish it. And I'll put this um, in the Google minutes here. Um, so it's, it's actually great because I, I use the raise hand button <laughs> to try to not create a lot of like async uh, you know, um, anyways, but uh, uh, since we're getting to doc documentation accessibility, um, I, I think first of all, it's uh, it's um, maybe a good idea to just share. I, I don't know if others who are joining us for the first time want to go through how the document is structured generally, like um, like how, how we go about uh, working in the Google Doc and how we structure our metric. Um, just you know, to get everyone on the same page, um, would that be a, a good idea? Yeah. No, that's an excellent idea. So we have in the chaos project a um, somewhere we have a template. I can never find it. It's right here. Okay, so in the chaos project, when we define metrics, we have a template that we follow for all metrics, where we have the name of the metric. We always have a question that the metric is trying to answer. Because we are following a goal question metric approach, which says that looking at a metric by itself, is not meaningful. We have to understand why we're looking at a metric and what questions we want to answer. And we derive those questions when we build out a metric strategy by knowing what our goals are. And these can be community goals, these can be uh, organizational goals, but then for reaching the goals, we have questions. So let's say our goal is to grow the community, then our question could be how many um, new contributors have we had over the last month? And then we have a metric that is new contributors. And I'm just giving that example because before this call, I was working with the evolution working group on that metric. And so for each metric, we describe what it is. We have objectives for why someone would want to use that metric. We have information about how we suggest implementing it. There may be filters for 
looking at the data in different ways. There may be visualizations so that you have an idea for how the metric could be displayed. There, we have a list of tools that we know provide the metric. <laughs> Typically, this is Augur and Grimoire Lab. Um, there may be data collection strategies if there are no direct tools. So sometimes we do interviews or survey questions. And then we have references if there have been blog posts, websites, academic papers that have talked about this metric or the topic that this metric is on. So that's the format that we follow. And then we have for developing a metric, a typically a Google Doc that we can all edit at the same time. And I'm going to put it in the chat as well, if that's easier. Um, so please do join this document. And then for the next, let's say, 15, 20 minutes, I would like us to revise this metric. So at your own pace, start reading through it if it makes sense. You can directly edit it or if you are, have something you're not sure about, you can either suggest. So at the top right, you can change from editing to suggesting and then we can talk about it. If you have any question along the way, please interrupt. You're not interrupting. Please speak up and ask the question so we can discuss um, how to proceed. That is our process. Sully, did I miss anything? Uh, no, that was uh, flawless. I, I mean, practice makes perfect, right? So, <laughs> I, yeah, so I, I usually ask for this, right? So, sorry about that. <laughs> no, I think it's good, especially since we have uh, new folks on the call. Yeah. So, please but, join. No. Google Doc and just start editing. So I, I just had one question about how we're framing this metric. I, I understand that we're framing it um, based on what is out there, right? But then the question is how much documentation is actually accessible? I kind of threw that tangent at the end of last me uh, yesterday's meeting about um, writing styles being a matter of how accessible a document really is. Um, that there is a dominant style to writing things, and that doesn't mean that it's just the single style where information can actually become, um, you know, um, documented and related to every member of a project. So, so I think it's fair for this metric to say that there there is a missing chunk of accessibility in documentation. Uh, and just, you know, how, how do we go about measuring something that is not even, you know, attempted? Or <laughs> um, would that be a fair place to bring this up? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really just not sure uh, there are answers. So, you know, trying and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to be the only one speaking here, so. I'm going to just stay silent for like 10 seconds and give someone else to jump in here. Mm. I think what you were talking about yesterday is this neurodivergent um, accessibility, where we were talking about how um, different people have different attention spans or need to have a different way of presenting it so that they can process it. And so I know we already incorporate in, in the objectives here. And so your question is how do we collect data about this, right? Uh, yeah, but I, uh, mine is broader. Like if you can make that selection include the line before it. Um, you see, the problem is writing style, when, when you use a different way to consume something written to be read, um, like if you use a screen reader, um, you don't necessarily uh, get the same from the same writing style that is meant to be read. And, um, you know, so the, the idea that 
when you're relating a message in, in writing that is read in, as intended when you write it, you're, you're relying on this medium. Um, so I believe that when you change, when, when you translate mediums or, you know, the audience is, is of a different frame of reference, that's the way I'd like to define it. You not you you sometimes un, un you know unintentionally rely on um, contextuals or rely on pace or you know rely on on a way of looking at how your message is received that is disconnected from how, how it actually is received. Um, so so I'd like to say yeah neurodivergence or neurodiversity is a new angle for. Um, accessibility, but the concerns of dwell, pace, um, attention span, all these are really not, not necessarily just because of the um, ability to read or not, but, but rather the ability to um, somehow consume what is meant to be read uh, in a way that is accessible to that individual. So, so I, I think the dynamic here is a lot more intertwined. It's not about just the um, very concrete manifestation of dwell um, um, and, and, and other kind of things like inertia, like um, pace. Um, so, so yeah, so it, it is really those two bullet points. Um, you okay, know, so the yeah. question that I have is, uh, from understanding what the problem is, how do we put this somehow into this metric definition? Because that's what we're working on, right? So it's good that you bring in that background. Um, and I, I'm not that knowledgeable about that background. So um, how do we how do we put this into our data collection strategy or in our metric so that we can capture this? So I guess one, one question that comes to mind is, um, and you know, it might just escape me if it's in the metric already or not, but um, there, there, um, you know, we, we want some, some measure of whether or not the documentation is, um, um, you know, an overload. So we want to measure, you know, irrespective of what is, you know, what, what the uh, factors particularly are, how much of an overload, relative overload, are some segments feeling the documentation is relative to the other segments, um, so you know. Is this maybe already captured in this multiple choice question for did you face any challenges related to the accessibility of documentation when you started to participate in the project? For example, because of language barriers, discoverability of documentation, or structure of documentation, etc. So this uh, gives someone who has a challenge understanding the documentation to say, uh, yes, there have been issues, and yeah, um, to describe what they are. Yeah, uh, you know, I would like us to come up, not necessarily right now, but but eventually to try to break this down into tenable, measurable things about the kind of challenges and the severities of them. Um, because um, just saying, yes, there are challenges, um, it does not really get, um, it does not give a particular um, indicator on what kind of solutions or, you know, what kind of, of you know, causes are there. Um, and it, it kind of leaves it as, okay, you know, you have uh, certain segments that are not, you know, consuming documentation as well as everyone else. Um, and it just, it, it leaves a lot of uh, vagueness that is not necessarily actionable, it just... Um, well, you're, you're right, especially since if we do a survey, then we only survey the people who are currently in the community, and that might be people who did not have barriers to begin with. And so I, I think it's important that we have these 
W3C, the Common Access Guidelines, and other resources, uh, bring down barriers to Kunis contribution, neurodiverse individuals. So I think we, we have those references. Um, the question is, so you also said, um, maybe this is not something for right now, maybe there's something we can improve on in the future. Yes, yes. Um, definitely, it's, uh, it's kind of a discussion that uh, I would like to somehow relate to this metric. Maybe it could be an issue that we can open in the repo. Uh, or, you know, so, so I, I just would like this to be like, you know, put a, uh, like an anchor point somewhere to see where this uh, continues. I can open the issue. I don't, um, I don't mind that. It's just if that's um, useful for everyone else or, you know, a different way of going about it would be more recommended. So I, I like the idea of improving this metric in the future and taking something that is fairly simple to start with and then adding that depth that you are describing at a later point, just so that we start to have something because something is better than nothing and moving us off zero is better than trying to really nail it down to the most perfect version and yeah. not being able to release this metric, let's say, for example. Yeah, um, no, definitely. So, I'm, I'm, I'm with you 100 percent. So um, so I'll, I'll just open that issue and, and not blocking this metric whatsoever. Actually, the issue will be like future revisions, you know, about in future revisions of this metric, um, what, what the challenges are really. Um, and then everyone can be party to that issue. And um, um, so would I do this in diversity and inclusion, uh, the repo itself, or would this? Yes. OK, perfect. OK, sorry. So yeah, sorry for um, you know, stalling us here. Thanks. No, you're, you're making good points. Um, but because we, I, I don't know how to put this in there, and you, you said you don't know how to uh, make this happen right now, I would yeah, like yeah. to make that a future improvement of this metric and move forward with what we can do right now. Perfect. All right, well, thanks. Yeah. So is there anyone on the call who has uh, maybe read this for the first time or who has uh, thought about this topic of documentation accessibility before and has some thoughts about what we have written here in the past? I just want to get some feedback from everyone on the call here. So uh, in my personal case, I'm just learning and listening to you because I have no experience or even opinion. So I'm reading and that's all I can offer today, I'm afraid, <laughs> at least for this metric. So, so, so far what I've read, uh, it's good for me, but probably missing some points. Yeah, that's the kind of feedback I, I was hoping for, so thank you. If you say what I'm reading makes sense to me, this is something that helps me be a little bit more attentive to documentation accessibility mm -hmm. than before reading this, then we have achieved the first goal to move the needle off zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have um, said this much better than me, but yeah, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Was there anything while reading it that maybe created some dissonance or that didn't feel right? And this is again a question for everyone on the call. So perhaps the specific discussion you were having right now was like, um, yeah. So the neurodivergent. Um, making documentation accessible to various cognitive approaches is kind of a uh, new thing to me. I didn't even think about this, so this is kind of a, a learn thing. Uh, for me. Yeah. 
I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. And now you're much better audible than you were at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, that's good. Uh, in the objectives section of uh, the documentation accessibility, you know, we have like inclusion has been included two times. And both times it means different things, right? Yes, this part. So, uh, like, what is the reason behind this? Uh, am I audible? Was I audible? Yep, I am going to. Okay. Change this. There, there was. I don't. I don't remember that there was a specific reason why we named it that way. But it's. Yeah. Thank you for catching that. I'm proposing to change the text here to be language inclusion and language diversity. But it, th does that resonate with you more? Does that? Solve yeah, that clarifies it a bit more. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That was a good, yeah. good yeah. I did not see that before. Okay. Well, we've worked on this a few times and uh, talked about it in these meetings. So the next step is to create a pull request and add it to the repository. Uh, thank you for giving it a read, for giving feedback and helping us make sure that this um, metric as we wrote it out makes sense to you because that is an important part for our metric definitions. We want these to be understandable by different people. So all of your feedback is very Helpful. Um, no, I'm glad I could help with this. Yes. Uh, so, um, um, Georg, um, uh, so do we want to um, see if um, uh, we can get um, some of our new members to be asked. I have um, a question. Uh, yes, Jelaine. Yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> so just looking at the objective section, if I was starting a new project or I was trying to improve the documentation in an existing project and I read something like, some of these things are pretty easy to measure, right? Like the, the, you can do the screen reader test. That's something I, I didn't know existed, that's, but that's a, you know, a, a, it's, it's more a concrete thing. But when I read something like documentation is easy to follow and structured intuitively, intuitively <laughs> um, how do I know what that means? I mean, Obviously, anyone who writes something thinks it's easy to follow and structured intuitively until someone else reads it and goes, I wouldn't have structured it that way. And there's probably not one answer. And, and the kind of same thing with like, the documentation uses global language. I, I'm not sure I know what that means. It's, it's a good goal, but sort of, so if you're, if you're trying to implement this, you know, where, where do you, I mean, there's a measurement issue, but just from a practice, you know, from the, the, the better use of this, right, is someone uses this as a guide, I'm assuming, to kind of when they're, you know, they want to kind of go down these lists and go, okay, yeah, I've done that. How do they, you know? Yeah, thank you so much for actually framing the question, because I've been trying to ask that question in not so many clear words, I guess. Uh, but it's definitely a problem. Yeah, I mean, there, that's, I'm watching you change it. I don't know, is that, he's typing, but right, the documentation being available in different languages. Okay, that's, 
different. I, I, I was reading, I was, that's a different thought than a, a global language. I mean, um, and then. Uh, so. I think those are, yeah, some of these things are easier. I guess those are, I'm trying to see if there's another one. I mean, <laughs> document, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, while we're on the topic, documentation limits use of unnecessary technical jargon. I love that as someone who's not a technical person, but that is also in the eye of the beholder. And I, I, I can give you a, I, can, I, I have actually have a personal great example of that. <laughs> you want to share that? Example? Uh, yeah, I mean, if that helps, if it helps. Um, I was setting up Ubuntu on my on a personal computer before I started working for Knuckle, and um, that was not necessarily easy because I didn't go the easy route in terms of buying some a laptop that was pre-installed. And so, uh, a, a free software friend of mine, who's a you know very technical person, said I said it was really hard, and he said, "Well, I'm surprising it was hard because Ubuntu has such great documentation, which it does, undoubtedly." And, and the answer to that was, you know, he was curious and the answer was like, the documentation is really great, but it's written for someone who has like some level of understanding about Linux command line and how to install operating systems or whatever. And, and so I had, I had a, a friend of mine who's, who was helping me and he was like, why can't, you know, I was like, I can't fix this problem. And he goes, well, clearly other people are in this problem. It's totally documented. People have written posts and steps on how to fix it. And he's like, look, here's this post. You just do whatever the step was. And I was like, right, but between steps like three and four or whatever it was, I'm lost. That's where I go off the rails because I don't know what that means. And so there was like another level down for me to understand it, but you know, lots of other people obviously would have understood it. So um, I think you have to figure out like, on something like that, like who's the audience? Who's the audience that's supposed to understand it, right? For it's not going to be the same audience. That's a very good point. I had the same experience with the different projects in the past where they describe it bullet point by bullet point how to get it, but I'm just missing the knowledge on how to get to the next bullet point. Okay. Right. And, and, and I, you know, I, I do think that the Ubuntu, I'm not just saying this because I work for Kanaka, like I was, I, as someone who was new, I was really impressed with what I could find and, and some of the stuff I could follow, it just depended on kind of like how deep in the weeds you had to get in terms of a fix to make it work on the hardware I was using. But, you know, obviously, you know, a project, some projects, you know, a non-technical person isn't the, um, audience so I think yeah I mean this has been more of a fuzzy objective but maybe the objective is it's not necessarily non-technical maybe some it's like appropriately appropriate to whatever the project is right I mean who are you trying to attract to work on the project yeah um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe so we can add that as a comment somewhere. Um, could I, could I, I, I don't know if it fits in the, fits in the um, overall strategy of the metric, but it seems like documentation accessibility is a great place to tell people, okay, you identify there's something about documentation accessibility with a metric. Can you capture this? Can you create like a, like a case study or something like this? Uh, just just somehow um, capture what the problem looked like or what the clever solution was or you know um, it, it's not part of the data used for the metric but it's a result of the metric showing uh, this continuity and how um, you know we go about um, addressing an unknown and, and, and you know very very unclear uh, dimension of, of the next few years, I guess, you know, making things accessible is going to be very hard. Um, and that's because the answers are not yet there and the questions are sometimes not even um, being asked. 
So would that be something to add to the metric or would that be like a meta elsewhere? Can you maybe just uh, write it in so we can see how it flows with the rest? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll add it to the end of the data collection. You have yeah. the walkthrough. Um, I, I just want to clarify, what do you mean um, data collection um, being walked through with the intended user? Would, would there be a questionnaire or would they take a screenshot of what they walk through? Like, how do we collect this? Because that will affect how my point would look. Yeah. Um, so I guess along with the source files of the documentation that was, um, that was, so, uh, yeah. So, you know, like take a screenshot with your phone on what you were looking at when you were on Facebook and then put it back on Facebook, that kind of thing. So, uh, so if they're, if they're walking through documentation, I, they identified like a slippery slope or something. Um, that would be a good thing to be like, okay, I'll take a screenshot, you know, capture this in time along with the, with the, with the uh, discussion that took place. Um, so that both the interaction of the walkthrough and the resource that was the context of that walkthrough um, would be available for people to, uh, you know, um, you know, get get to or, or you know, relate the whole. Um, um, yeah, so I guess that's it. Well, another another approach could be to ask for a friction log. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So, Jelaine, I I think these two approaches that we just added um, could maybe address the specific scenario that you had? What do you think? Uh, oh, I see that. Okay. Just trying to see where we were on your heading. I'm, I'm sharing my I'm sharing my um, So the walkthrough part is sort of addressing the in intuitive organization. Yeah, I mean, I'll, the, certainly the last bullet is kind of will certainly catch lots of things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, another thing is, you know, I was thinking like, to be fair, you can't write the documentation to be inclusive. I don't mean inclusive in a diversity way, but like to be appropriate for all levels, right? Like it would be silly it might be unrealistic for some of that documentation that I found for someone to add the stuff that I would need because someone else would be like, duh, you know, but you could also maybe preface it with, Hey, in order, you know, it like, here's some background you might need to know for this, you know, you don't want to reinvent the wheel either. Right. I think it's, I think it's fair to say, Hey, in order for this document to, you know, in order for you to work, like someone who's not a software developer, isn't going to start like myself, isn't going to start contributing to the Linux kernel tomorrow, just give an extreme example. And so there's no reason that the Linux kernel documentation should be written to like my level of understanding. That would be an unfair expectation. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I think then we should also say that at this, at this time, you know, uh, every every project or organization will have their own definition of um, what are the target um, segments, the target audience, what are their um, current, um, um, you know, um, uh, the, the the current demographics or breakdown uh, relative to the formats or the variations, or if they just use one variation of documentation. So, so I think it's fair to say, 
um, it's it's you know you want to you want to allow people to to say how they went about trying to um, cater to the very wide spectrum of accessibility um, that uh, you know they divide it in a way that is pragmatic to their own um, um, capacities and ambitions um, as a project and as a community. Um, and there are no standards yet, you know, hopefully soon or you know, relatively soon we'll have that. Uh, but until then, it would be interesting to, to understand how projects go about breaking up that spectrum and, and trying to address it in their own um, strategy. Um, so um, the question I want to clarify is, does it become part of the data collection strategy to ask about their own um, um, targeting and um, you know, their own doc documentation targeting um, strategy of, you know, at a project level? Um, or would that fall under a different section? So I propose here under implementation to have a note to be attentive to who the audience of the documentation is. Um, and I think that's what you were talking about. Yeah, like if you say, you know, we have X, Y, uh, and Z uh, uh, variants of documentation to, to cover the um, accessibility segments and requirements of our membership, um, then it's it's really a relative definition, and, and so including that definition, um, how they look at um, you know version X or version Y or version Z of the document uh, to to be targeting a specific segment, uh, how they define that would be a good good thing for us to um, to to you know have them include. Um, in, in conducting this so so that when you're comparing the results of this metric across projects this relative aspect is uh, stipulated by each project's own um, uh, way of going about something that is unstandardized okay so i i think that's a good point um, we are out of time so if you can jot down that idea somewhere where you think it fits um, that would be good. Otherwise, we we are at the end of our meeting, and I thank everyone for participating. And uh, see you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye all. Bye bye. Bye. bye.